Welcome to Programming with Professor Caleb. Today I'd like to talk about how we can compare strings and other objects in Java. Remember that our object variables are actually object reference variables. The variable contains the memory address of the actual object. One of the places that affects us is when we want to compare two objects. The relational operators equals, not equals, less than, greater than, and so on work on the actual value of the variable. That is, they work on the address. So if I have object one equals object two, and these are both objects of some class, I'm asking if the memory addresses are the same. In other words, are these two object reference variables really pointing at the same object? Now, there are times when I actually do want to ask that question, but they're quite rare. Other relational operators give us even less useful comparisons. Object one is less than object two is asking if object one's memory address is smaller than object two's memory address. That is just not something we're going to care about. So we're gonna look at how we really want to compare objects. All objects in Java have an equals method that takes another object as a parameter. The method returns a Boolean, that true or false value we need in a condition, and it has a parameter that is another object, the one we want to compare to. If the person who wrote the class wants people to be able to compare two objects for equality, then they will make sure that the equals method correctly compares the values in the objects. We'll look at how to do that when we start writing our own classes. Right now, I want to demonstrate the use of this with a built-in Java class called Gregorian Calendar, which deals with dates. Let's just take a quick look at the Gregorian Calendar class. I wanna show you, we're just going to work with this constructor that takes a year, month, and day of month. We can actually deal with times, but we don't really care about that. And then um, we're going to use the equals method. So first of all, of course, we need to import the appropriate thing. And Gregorian calendar happens to be in the java.util package. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a few of these. I want a Gregorian calendar. Let's just call it date one is assigned new Gregorian calendar. And let's make this 9-1-2020. And then I'm going to make another one that is a different date. So let's make it the 10th. And then I want one that has the same date as the first one. And I'm gonna fix my spelling here. And finally, I'm gonna have yet another one where I just have this object reference variable pointing at one of the Gregorian calendars I already have. So I'm gonna have it point at the first date. Actually, I'm gonna have it point at the second date. Just give us a little variety here. So let's look at what happens here when we do various things. So I'm gonna say if date one dot equals equals date two system dot out dot print line date one equals date two else system.out.println date one does not equal date two. 
Now I'm going to copy this a few times and do different things with it. So. Okay, so we've got one and two, which should not be equal. Then I want to compare one and three. So let's change those. So if date one equals date three, we're going to print date one equals date three. Otherwise, we're going to print date one does not equal date three. Then I want to actually try using the equals operator. So we're going to say if date equals with the operator. And let's go ahead. And we're going to put the operator there. And then finally, I want to do that with two and four. Sorry, two and four, two, four, four, two. Okay, so this will tell, this will show us, we expect, actually we didn't care about date one and date two. We care about date one and date three here because those are the ones that should be equal values but are not the same object. So let's go ahead and run this and go through why this is true. So date one does not equal date two. Well, date one and date two have different values. So that's good. Date one does equal date three when we use the equals method because date one and date three have the same values. However, notice that date one does not equal date three if we use the equal equal because even though these two objects have the same values, they are not the same object. On the other hand, if we compare date two and date four, in fact, they are equal because date four is pointing at the same object that date two is. Now notice that if I actually do the equals method with date two and date four, I will have that same result. So let's real quickly just change our first one to be about date two and date four. And run that again, and you'll see they are the same object. The same object does have the same values, so either of those will say equals. What we need to be very clear on is the equals operator will not work if they're different objects, even if they have the same values. And that's why we have this equals method. Okay, so the equals method is great, but sometimes we want to do more with our objects than just check to see whether they're equal. Anytime we want to compare objects, we're always going to be dependent on what methods the class provides for our use in doing the comparison. Fortunately, for classes where comparison beyond just equals makes sense, we'll often find appropriate methods. Today I want to look at a couple of options that the string class provides. First, we have an alternative equals method that ignores case, called equals ignore case. Once again, we return a boolean, we're going to take in the string we want to compare to. This can be very useful. For example, if you ask a user for a yes or no answer, you really don't want to care whether or not they capitalized the Y in yes. So you'd rather use equals ignore case than just equals. In general, you can see this is very much like the equals method itself. The other method I want to show you is a little more complex. The compare to method is what we use to deal with the notion of less than or greater than in strings. Notice that it returns an integer rather than a boolean 
because it's actually dealing with three possibilities. If the two strings are equal, it will return zero. If the calling object, the string before the dot in the method call, is less than the string we pass into the parameter, then the result will be negative, less than zero. By less than, when we're talking about strings, we generally mean that the first string, the one that's smaller, would come before the second string in the dictionary. However, we do need to be aware that capital letters will be considered smaller than lowercase letters in this comparison. So a capital Z is smaller than a lowercase a. If our calling object is greater than our argument, so the string would come later in the dictionary than the argument string, the method will return a positive number, something greater than zero. So let's play with this just a little bit in code as well. I'm gonna actually just comment out all of our Gregorian calendar stuff. And let's make a few strings. So string star one is um, apples. String star two is apples. Three is zebra. String star four is bear. Now let's make it aptitude. Okay, so let's print the results of some of these things. First of all, I want to just um, say system.out.println. And here's something that's worth noting. I can just say stir2 dot uh, equals ignore case stir1. And note that when we run this, it's going to print true. So we can actually put a condition like that in here. And you'll see str2 equals ignore case str1 because it's ignoring the capital A. Now, if I were to make that just equals, then it's going to be false because the lowercase a and the a, capital A, are not the same thing. Now let's look at what happens with the compare to. So um, stir one dot compare to compare to stir two. Let's see what we get. We get 32. So that's a positive number. That's saying that stir one with the lowercase a is bigger later in the dictionary, sort of, than the second one because the uppercase a is considered smaller than the lowercase a. Now, what if I did this stir one and I'm comparing it to stir four? Then I'm going to get a negative number because aptitude comes after apples. I just want to convince you that, you know, even if we're talking about capital Z, the case thing is going to cause us issues here. So if I do this, apples is bigger than zebra because zebra has this capital Z. So be aware of that. Now I will just let you know that there is a, another version of compare to where stir one and stir two are equal and where stir one and stir three stir three is smaller comes before zebra. 
So we can actually use this compare to to ignore case. But most often we're using it more like the apples and aptitude. Um, whenever we want to compare two strings, if we just want to see if they're equals, we're going to use either equals or equals ignore case. But when you want to know one of these should come before the other, then the compare to method or the compare to ignore case method, depending on your situation, will be the way to go. Now the big takeaway from this video should be always be careful to use the appropriate methods of a class when you want to compare two objects. Don't ever rely on your relational operators with objects. They will not work properly. Thanks for watching. In the next video, I'll introduce the switch statement, which is an alternative way to handle some of our linear nested if-else statements.